Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a pretty interesting discovery that suggests that planets do change quite dramatically over time. And all of this is based on all of the observations of over 4,000 different planets we've discovered so far. And what this implies is that planets like Neptune eventually transform and evaporate into something a little bit more similar to a typical super-Earth, which then can potentially change into something similar to planet Earth. Now, all of this is still preliminary, but the discovery is nevertheless really interesting. And all of this is actually based on a simple question. It seems that of many different planets we've discovered so far, only some of the exoplanets are similar to something we see in our own solar system. There's actually a surprising amount of different exoplanets that we've found that are very difficult for us to imagine, simply because they're very different from anything like planet Earth, or even gas giants like Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, and Jupiter. As a matter of fact, here you can see that Jupiter-like planets are somewhat rare. Now, this particular image is a little bit outdated, but the actual fractions haven't changed very much. A much more common type of a planet is more similar to Neptune and Uranus. We've also found quite a number of Earth-like planets, and even some planets a little bit smaller than Earth. But the vast majority of planets we've discovered so far, or the vast majority of exoplanets, are basically in between Earth and Neptune in mass and in size. These are so-called super-Earths, or sometimes known as mini-Neptunes. And they essentially represent the largest number of all of the exoplanets found. They also represent the largest numbers of planets per star on average around a typical star. And so here is an example from Kepler-62, with one potentially terrestrial planet, but the rest being either super-Earths or possibly mini-Neptunes. And because of this, it was always intriguing to us why is it that our solar system doesn't seem to have any of these super-Earths. There were a lot of different explanations proposed, like for example one of them involved an early major collision between various super-Earths that possibly existed in the solar system that may have actually resulted in a lot of material getting recycled and eventually forming the four terrestrial planets we have today with the rest of the material probably just settling somewhere in the asteroid belt or possibly getting kicked out of the system completely. But this particular explanation is the most dramatic one I have. And it doesn't obviously answer everything and has a lot of questions that left unanswered. And so because of this, there's this unusual mystery of the missing super-Earths and missing mini-Neptunes from the solar system. At the same time, the scientists have always speculated that there's actually some kind of a relationship between super-Earths and mini-Neptunes, a relationship that might also depend on the star they're orbiting, while also suggesting that maybe the star somehow influences the evolution of these planets and essentially forces them to transform over billions of years of orbiting in that particular star system. Also suggesting that there's actually a correlation between the radius and the mass of a planet and the age of the star. All of these speculations suggested one thing. It suggested that some of these planets we've discovered may have evolved quite dramatically over time, and most likely way more dramatic than anything we have in the solar system. And at the moment, the only way to kind of try to prove this speculation is to literally look at all of the planets we've discovered and to try to find if there's any relationship between, for example, the age of the star and the actual planet orbiting that star. And the other related speculation that scientists had for a very long time is in regards to something known as Ctonian planets. These are the planets that have been essentially evaporated by the solar radiation from the parent star and lost a lot of their mass to the outskirts of that particular star system. Essentially here we're talking about shrinking planets. Planets undergoing some dramatic change simply because of the radiation from the star. But despite the fact that we think that this process exists, we still have no idea how long this might take and how dramatic it might change a planet simply because it's kind of difficult for us to study all of this without having more data from other exoplanetary systems. But because we've discovered so many different mini-Neptunes and super-Earths in the last few years, we now actually have enough data to start making certain assumptions and to start testing them scientifically. And so with the discovery of over 4,000 confirmed exoplanets, the scientists essentially combined the data from the Kepler telescope and most recent release of this data, and combine it with the data from the famous ESA's Gaia telescope that studies the motion, age, and a lot of other characteristics of billions of different stars, which then allow the scientists to combine all of the data and to see if there's any correlation between the age of a star and size and mass of a typical planet. And as you can probably imagine, they made a surprising discovery. 
A discovery that would be impossible to make if we were just looking at one single planet, simply because we're only getting a single snapshot of the entire timeline of this planet. But by looking at hundreds and even thousands of these planets, things become a little bit more clear. And what these results suggest is that, independent of the actual location of the planet around the star system, it seems that many of these planets do lose quite a lot of mass, with the majority of planets transforming from something similar to a mini Neptune to something similar to a super Earth. And to help you visualize all of this, let's just say that this is a mini Neptune and this here is a super Earth. Obviously, a real mini Neptune would be a little bit smaller than Neptune and a real super Earth would be a little bit larger than planet Earth. And so what they discovered is that it seems that as the star gets older, the total ratio of mini Neptunes to Earths seems to actually change to the point where mini Neptunes start to disappear and more super Earths start to appear, as if some of the mini Neptunes transform into these super Earths. Or in other words, as the star ages, it's a lot more likely you're going to find more super Earths around those stars than you're going to find these mini Neptunes. And the only reasonable explanation, although possibly not the only explanation, is that these planets probably evaporated and decreased in mass and size, turning into super-Earths. And so what this study is really suggesting is that we're basically looking at a kind of a evolution of these planetary systems. As they age for billions and billions of years, some of the planets evaporate to the point where they lose several masses of planet Earth in total mass, most likely just gas like hydrogen and helium, and thus lose a lot of size and a lot of mass in the process. And so even though in the beginning of the star system a planet might resemble something like this, it will eventually start shrinking, getting smaller and smaller, and will also reach a point where it might turn into some sort of a relatively large terrestrial world. In this case, slightly more massive and slightly larger than planet Earth, something that we usually refer to as a super-Earth. Now, at this point, we don't really know what's going to happen to these planets, but chances are that they are going to stay terrestrial or not really gas planets anymore for the rest of the existence of that star system. But for as long as the planets here still have some sort of a gas envelope or even some sort of a liquid surface with a lot of liquid on the surface, chances for these planets to transform into, for example, something a little bit more similar to planet Earth or a little bit more terrestrial are going to be much higher. And I guess one of the major discoveries from this paper is that it seems to happen on really, really large timescales. We're talking about billions and billions of years here, not just something that happens in the beginning of the star system. And naturally, the more starlight the planet receives, or essentially the more illumination it gets from the star, the more likely it's going to lose more mass. And what this kind of presents to us is this idea of planetary evolution on the scales of billions of years. This of course also suggests that a lot of the planets we've discovered so far, especially a lot of these super-Earths, might transform even more. And this also basically explains to us that when we find a planet, we're not really looking at its final stage just yet. These planets will change with time, obviously not human times here, we're talking about billions of years, with some of these planets probably transforming quite dramatically to the point where, even though they might be uninhabitable and possibly difficult to survive on in the beginning, they might become more habitable after billions of years. And so, all in all, this is actually a pretty interesting discovery and definitely not something that we expected to find. But at the same time, it's a very exciting discovery and will most likely lead to a lot of new speculations, a lot of new ideas, and a lot of new papers. For now though, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. As always, check out the papers and relevant links in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.